In this one, we're flying a Cessna 180 on straight floats, which allows us to get pretty close to a glacier. We're literally gonna be slaloming through this stuff. Wow, that's awesome. And a favorite moose hangout spot. All right, so this is possibly the craziest place I've ever stopped in an airplane. We're in a swamp in the middle of Alaska, and Warwick is gonna try not to lose the drone. There it goes. And getting over the fear of minimal tree clearance while learning how to land it Alaskan style. A little bit of power. Good, we're good. Power. A little bit of power. Perfect. We were below the trees on that wing. I, I wish I had filmed on the left side because <laughs> Matt looked over. I'm like, geez, those look like you oh. <laughs> told me to get low. <laughs> Float training in the breathtaking wilderness of Alaska. This is the third part in an ongoing series. We started with the basics in a PA-12, but this is what we're working toward. Flying real-world missions with a DHC-2 de Havilland Beaver. Training in this location left me truly speechless. Plane in the foreground, mountain in the background. First, we have some more intermediate training to do. Today, we're working with an air traffic controller from Lake Hood, who's also a highly experienced float and backcountry pilot. He's gonna throw me in the left seat of his Cessna 180. Pretty cool to just bring a plane in and just stick it in the bushes. You're good to go. Clint's gonna supervise while I fly us to a local glacier, and he's also gonna help me level up in float planes from the PA-12. Steve, this is Clint Ward. How you doing? Good. Clint played a pretty major role in the first mission we flew after my beaver checkout. We timed it with his shift to surprise my family. Flight Chops 314 Hotel off of Lake Tower Information Uniforms, current altimeter 3019, winds 2705, and I heard you get the uh, special cargo on board by Evelyn. Reggie Smiling. Welcome to Alaska, Evelyn. And Jill. Flight Chops 4 Hotel Alpha, West Cliff Takeoff. C14 Hotel Alpha. So that's coming later in this series, but for now let's get back on board with Clint in his 180. So taking off, everything in, and then uh, as soon as you break the water, I usually do about two rolls of this prop just to bring it back a little bit so you don't make all the neighbors mad. And that climb out about 25 squared, so we get to about 800 feet. That's about as high as we need to go. So uh, checklist will be Master Mags. Yep, just uh, master, mixture in, I'm a couple shots of just, that's enough, crank her up. Uh, I guess no brakes, right? Yep. <laughs> We've been used to that. All clear! The little flying we've done around here, as you notice, everything is kind of uh, uh, lower altitude than, than you used to. And, um, and that's uh, just, just the way we roll around here. There's also a lot of uh, thought and airmanship that, that goes into, uh, into flying low. Check one, two, you got me? Check, 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 there we go. First, we like that because uh, we, we want to notice things on the ground and uh, we want to see things on the ground. A lot of times our weather doesn't allow us uh, to go too high. And two, um, traffic-wise, that's one less uh, block of altitude we have to worry about. We're looking more uh, on the same plane and above versus having to look below us, above us, and left and right. So uh, let's just review the procedure. It's going to be firewall power. Well, stick full back, then everything in. Two notches of flaps on takeoff. Wait till we get that second rise. That second rise, just slowly release the pressure, let it come down. It'll kind of get to a balance point. Where we're not doing anything until we get to about 60. And at 60, we'll get it off the water. We'll uh, roll the float. We'll just roll it. How do you feel the relationship is? I'm very new, obviously, right? So with this one with power compared to that one, this one will take a little bit longer to get off the water. It'll take, yeah, it'll take quite a bit longer than that cub will. Yeah. Okay, so once we get straightened out here, we'll do the gums check, I guess. So it'll be gas, undercarriage, we water, rudders up. A loon in the way there, hopefully he stays. Those guys are pretty brave. We almost hit one yesterday, he didn't seem to care. Okay, so those are up now. Okay, you got the flaps in? All right. Flaps are in. Mixture's in. Props in. All right, stick full back. And full back. Here we go. Metal Lakes traffic system, 180 is part of his, not Lake Metal Lakes. All the way back, all the way back. There we go. There's your rise, let her down a little bit. That uh, was the second rise? Yep.
Right about there. Now we're in the. Yeah, I can feel it now. There we so. go. We get up to 60. Pull back a little bit. Oh, little. There we go. And we're airborne. Push that your nose did. over. Get your speed up. Forgot to roll the float, but two rolls of prop. And then flaps up gently. One notch. Yep. Take a one notch in. There we go. So 80. Yeah, we'll climb out about 85. Airport. And we'll take a left turn whenever you're ready. So you see the uh, the valley that's over there to the left, that's what we're headed for. You can pull the manifold pressure back to about 23 inches and we'll pull the prop back to about 23 inches. Is this a bit of a cruise climb or do you want me closer to 85 to get no, up we there? Can just, we're, we can level off here and just sit at this altitude. It's so weird to be flying this low as a lower 48 kind of guy. How long have you been here for? I've been in Alaska since junior high. Wow. So 20 something years. I lived in Boise, Idaho for a few years doing uh, air traffic down there and then had the opportunity to come back, so I came back. But I've been back since 2010. What do you expect to get for cruise? Whatever we can get. Yeah. We what, usually get like buck 20, a little faster? Yeah, I'll usually about to run on buck 20 with the floats on. You go from wheels to floats, it's like putting a big parachute out behind you. Yeah, but I guess it's worth it for the freedom, right? Yep. Watch all the traffic set to 180, we're two to the north, but we'll be eastbound at 1,300, crossing over the numbers 22 Wasilla. So we've got an airport right off here off our right, beautiful downtown Wasilla International. Wow, am I already starting to see a glacier out there? That's a glacier. Wow, that's cool. These rivers sometimes change direction and stuff by like large margins because that seems like it's newly... People put their houses right next to the bank, you know, 10 years ago and while well, the river moves and... Yeah, that's that's a risky... Washes their house away. Have an updraft there. Might be picking up a headwind coming off the glacier. Usually the winds are pretty constant down this valley. In some instances, um, when we're flying, for example, towards the glacier, which I believe you did that with uh, Clint yesterday, uh, usually by the end of the afternoon, because of temperature rising, in the glacier, a lot of the wind actually comes off the glacier. And as you notice, uh, the winds were calm within 10, 15 miles from the last reporting weather station we had at three knots. So that's our playground with the Super Cubs. We'll come out here and land on these gravel bars. And it's fun when the wind's blowing 30, 35. You come in, you touch down, and the tires don't roll at all, and then you take off, and you pull flaps, you drift backwards, and you come back and land the same spot. <laughs> that's crazy. And then by the time you guys got to the glacier, you had white caps, one foot waves, and approximately 30 to 40 knots of, of wind, and that was probably late in the afternoon. Have you gotten to see this glacier recede in a measurable way in your lifetime, or? No, I haven't. It looks about the same as it did. But there's, there's one down south of Anchorage, it's called Portage Glacier. They have a nice big visitor center set up for it, for this glacier that's out there, and then it's receded around the corner, so now you don't see the glacier and then we are, but you got, they have a boat out there to take you for a boat ride to look at it. A little bit of bumps coming up here because the water's, the river's pretty calm, but you can see the whipping off the lake up there, so it's yep. another airplane down here on the strip. So where's the picnic strip you're talking about? Is that it? Yep, right here where this yellow plane is at. So there's just some tables set up? The, no, just river. a picnic table set up there. Pretty epic Great. place Great. to stop here. for the lunch. Side, yep. uh, awesome. This is pretty awesome. Jeez. It's just like a regular day for you, right? Or a normal Tuesday. It's hard to predict scale around here. Like this ice, it's so big and yet it looks small, you know? Like it's hard to figure it out. We're gonna fly over here towards that. Okay, like over the river. rocks and the, got yeah. it. Got about 30 on the nose right now. Ridiculous. Go so take her down a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Really? Okay. <laughs> We're literally going to be slaloming through this stuff a little bit. If you were going into a headwind about 30, 40 knots and you were flying at 100 feet over the, the ground and you have an engine failure at that point, obviously you were 
applying the same rule right after takeoff. Uh, 180 is definitely not going to be possible, and we're probably going to pick something 30, 45 degrees of each of our, no of our nose. But we're also cognitive that we're going to want to reduce our impact, which is our force. We're flying into a headwind. So at this point, we just have to start slowing down the aircraft, adding flaps, pick the least worst or the best uh, location to uh, put the aircraft on the ground, and then we're going to use that 30, 40 knots to our advantage. Wow, that's awesome. Pick her back up a little bit, get out of this corner. Hey, Nick, traffic is 180, we're at the top of the gorge, heading for Colony Lake, or Lake George, and we'll be at the land of the water. Is that high enough? Is that getting higher or is that high enough? Oh, that's plenty high. Avoid that TFR that's out in that area. What's the TFR for? There's a 1950s, there was a C-146 possibly, maybe one, I don't remember what it was. Crashed up on the hill up here, and 50, 60 years later, it's traveled 12 miles down the glacier to the tow here, and they finally, they're, they're picking up body parts and pieces of the airplane and bringing it back. So it's like that bottom part part of it? Yep, right in that bottom corner. So would you call that rough water? There's some white caps. I'd call that rough water. Yeah. But now you continue along the glacier, you finish the tour, and now you're headed back uh, home. Probably at that same altitude would be, at that point, reckless because now we are doing the same speed of, let's say, 80 to 100 miles an hour that we were going up, and now we have a 30, 40 mile an hour tailwind. So now our ground speed is about 140 miles an hour, and we're at the same altitude that still doesn't allow us to do your probably only life-saving maneuver at that point, which would be a 180 to get your ground speed under control before you impact it. And why would you want to fly anywhere else? It's pretty awesome. So if we're flying low with a strong tailwind, we want to be high enough to be able to always do a 180 back into the wind and accept the fact that we're going to crash. And now it's all about reducing our impact speed or ground speed or water speed by going into the wind. Two different maneuvers that could be split 10 minutes apart by just doing a 180 degree turn and coming back home. That one, you were managing your wrist properly. On your return flight, you were definitely not managing your wrist properly. It's hard to judge scale, but how big do you think these chunks of ice are? Those are like the size of houses? Yeah, maybe about the size of a house on those big ones. That means those swells are pretty good. From the, it's a scale, like I'm only used to seeing it on a boat. So uh, that's something that's uh, we teach around here, that's something that most of us are aware. And again, it's the uh, maneuver that may be, uh, may be carried over to lower 48 in a simple turning downwind, uh, flying into a strong headwind uh, at an airport. Now you're turning on downwind and realizing that maybe you don't want to start that downwind until you know you have enough height and altitude to get the airplane either back on the runway or back into the headwind to reduce your impact speeds. Go up here and see if we can find some wildlife. That one on the right in the river. What do you see? There's a moose in the water, big one. Oh, I see him. Yeah, that is a big animal. But we'll just talk through your planning here. Some of these tall, skinny trees are hard to see, though, eh? Yeah, there's another one over here in the lake. So we're just going to put it down the swamp. And the biggest thing, I went, one reason I flew over is so I can look and see how deep it was, if there's anything out there to hit. Right. Nothing really to hit, and that moose is up to his middle of his belly, so it's at least two or three feet deep. And the wind's blowing out of the valley, so we're gonna slide her down to the other end down here, past these guys a little bit. <laughs> That's crazy. There it goes. It might appear that Clint's got us parked kind of randomly in the middle of a swamp, but he actually has a plan to get us out of here smoothly. We'll just get back in, we'll push off a little bit with the paddles and then pull the flaps and just let it sail back until we're out of the grass here and we'll fire it up. So it was a conscious decision to beach it into the wind, knowing that the wind would be what we could use to sail out? Yep. You sure as heck wouldn't want to do this on the downwind side? No. Yeah. We, 
yeah, we could have sailed back into the grass until we stopped, but yeah. what we're trying to get is out here, so it's instead of going down that direction. It's one of the few times you're gonna actually be going backwards. If you're in a strong uh, wind and you don't feel comfortable doing a, uh, a plow taxi to turn ahead, go ahead and downwind, what we can do is let the aircraft weather wane, add some flaps, open up doors, and let the airplane go. Powered idle, obviously the wind is stronger than your idle, so that's why you're going backwards. Uh, in some intense situations, we have to be very careful because uh, now we're going back to the skinny part of the floats. And you dig in. So how do you think you would prevent from digging in? Adding power. So if you add too much power, now you're going forward. So you're kind of using uh, your, uh, your engine to control your rate of going backwards. And now you're saying, ooh, Martin, that has to be a pretty strong wind. Well, it is actually. But you can get going backwards pretty good. Awesome. Clint made it seem way too easy. I couldn't get the cameras reset fast enough to capture the process of sailing out of here before he'd already fired up and had us taxiing. So you, you sailed it back with full flaps and then it, how did you get it? Like I was kind of doing camera stuff and all of a sudden you had it turned around. I would just put the water rotors down to turn. We don't, there's a, you know, a little bit of wind today so it's enough to get us to sail backwards. Also we fired up because we were getting close to the other bank. Didn't want to get stuck on that one. Yeah. We had enough room to make the turn so. Uh, it was a fairly short takeoff. We'll let you do it. We got enough. We'll go down here to the end a little bit and turn around. The other thing with taking off on short legs is it's get everything set because when you make that turn, you're going. And what's your abort plan? Like, say you're like, nah, this isn't working. Like, at what point are you needing to know that? Uh, probably about three quarters of the way. And if you're not at your, what, like, most of your rotation speed by then? Yep. Shut her down. So we'll get her all set up here. Two notches of flaps, props in, gas is on, under carriage is still down, fixtures still out, still got a little ways to go, props set. You're tight here because you're about to do a left turn? Yep. And you always do left turns for torque? Yep, P-Factor torque, turn you around. Okay, Vector's full rich, prop is in, you guys ready to go? Ready to ready. go. Hopefully we make this turn. Water rudder's up. And we're out of here. Yeah, so you're just avoiding that weed mat? Yep, grass is okay. But who knows how thick that was, so why not just avoid it? All right, 55, pull it back, little roll, and we're airborne. Nice. Connect traffic, system 180, we're off Jim Lake, uh, Palmer bound. Funny, you can see in the lakes where the moose have been walking because there's tracks underwater. That's cool, yeah, I see them, yeah, you're right. You want it? Yeah. All yours. Got it. Okay, let's go out here to, uh, we'll go out to, Lake Lucille, nice big lake. We'll get you a couple landings in. Is Lake Hood the most busy uh, seaplane base in the world? Is that the? Is that what I hear? Yep, Lake Hood's busiest seaplane base in the world, and Anchorage International is number two in the United States for cargo. Flying straight floats over land inspires some unique emergency considerations. Not a lot of options if you had an engine failure right now with straight floats. What would you do? Just get it down on the grass between uh, the median. Yeah, you're just you're going down. Probably right on the highway would be fine. Yeah, like try to put it on the grass in between, it might skid better, or you might hit a bump and then that's worse. Yeah, it could hit a bump, and they're usually those ditches that got a pretty good median in there, so All you right. end up hitting the wingtips anyway. Yeah. And yeah, we're getting close. We're setting up to land about 17 inches of manifold pressure. We're going to slow down to the flap range. Uh, pretty much in the downwind, one notch of flaps. Uh, turn at base, two notches of flaps, and as you're turning final. You know, do your gump check. Hey, look, and as you're final landing, landing assured over the lake, and you got enough room. That third notch of flaps. I just fly her all the way in. But you're clear over there. Yep, you're clear. There we go. Yeah. Wasilla traffic system 180. We'll be landing on Wasilla Lake, and we're over downtown. So we can set her up in the downwind. Pull her back about 18 inches of manifold. We we'll just leave the mixture of prop there until we get turned around a little bit. All right, so we're just going to treat that little bit of trees with a break in it as our obviously the beginning of the runway. Yep. We'll just kind of stick to the left side, maybe. We'll just go right in the middle of the lake, right between that. We'll just call that shoot right at the right at the threshold of there, your little box runway right there. Okay. 
One notch out. Okay, so get a base going in here. A little tight. Oh, you're good. Get her down. Probably pull that power back a little bit more. Okay, so gas, undercarriage, mixture. Pop about now, go full fine. Yep, go ahead. Just pull that third notch. We'll get her down and pull some more power off also. All right, just fly her on in. Big lake area traffic, red 180 on float. Uh, touch and go, left side, big lake. I got a boy there, and this line up about here is heading to wind roughly. Perfect. Watch all traffic system 180, we're landing on Watch Lake. Okay, I'll set my attitude about now. Attitude, a little bit of power. More power, a little more power, more power, more power. There you go. More power, more power. More power, there we go. Stick pullback. Power off. Okay, rid of my flaps. Power off. All yeah, the way back. So should, should have got the power off sooner, right? Eh? Yep. As soon as it touches, kill the power, and then, uh, then we'll get rid of the flaps after that's. And idle. Yep, below a thousand. Okay, we'll just take her back to the that buoy that was out there. And then we'll okay, did you just lean for taxi? Yeah, lean yeah, for okay, taxi. Okay, that's cool. That ain't cheap. Nope. The only thing when you're coming in is bring a little bit more, a little bit more power. You can hear the stall horn going off. So just a little bit more power. We'll just level that guy off a little bit more. And you know, on water, you're not trying to land on the numbers or anything. You got room to. I'll use the power to cushion it. Yep. Well, that was good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Once we make the turn, stick all the way back. Uh, we'll get turned around in the wind. I'll try to remember to lift the float this time. Last time I didn't. And we'll just do right pattern again, or I'll yeah, we'll just take off. Do a run couple more in the right pattern. This time we'll get you a little closer to the trees. Like lower when I'm coming in? Yep. <laughs> Got about, uh, if you can be about 15 feet over the top of those trees, it'd be perfect. So I should get my turn going about now, or you want to tuck in even further? No, nope, we can go. Start your turn. We had power. Let the torque help yep. us. Go ahead. How about now? Yep. Sure in. Okay, everybody's good to go. Ready? All the way back. And full throttle. Wasilla traffic system 180 report Wasilla Lake will be in right traffic Wasilla. Hold her back. There's your first step and let oh. her down a little bit. There. Um, what am I doing wrong here? Forward. There we go, just a little bit. There okay. we go. Yeah. And we'll swirl her. Oh, it's already off. Okay. Nose down. Four rolls in the prop. There we go, I'll climb it out at 80. Flaps are good, they're just leaving it at one, one? Okay. yeah. Planning to fly close to trees on approach is still a hard thing to wrap my head around. Oh, gas is on, undercarriage is up. But I fought through it for this last one. Pull the power off. Off, eh? Yep. Damn, okay. I feel like we're gonna be short if I pull it off now, but yeah, pull it off. Right there is good. A little bit more. Oh. I got all the flaps in? Got it. Flaps are good. That's your flare. And my flare. A little bit of power. Good, we're good. Power? A little bit of power. Perfect. Nice. Power off, stick back. Perfect. You were below the trees on that wing too. I, I wish I had filmed on the left side because Matt looked over. I'm like, Jesus, those look like. Oh, you told me to get low. <laughs> and so we headed back to Martin's base camp, ready to start planning for the next phase, which is moving up to the Beaver. So definitely check out parts one and two if you haven't seen them. And there's a lot more coming from this Alaska series, flying with Martin and Tim, who are from Apex Aviation in Alaska. It's been a really great time working with them. And definitely huge thanks to Clint for taking me flying on this one. I learned a lot from him. Keep going down, keep going. Oh my God, it feels close. And Clint also gave us a great briefing on arriving and departing Lake Hood, which is coming up soon. A little more power. Oh, much? A little bit much, we're still low and down though, there we go. Please visit flightchops.com to check out what we've got going on in terms of giveaways. This month we're actually doing a builder focused giveaway with some really awesome tools. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp.